Hi, I'm Jamie Shand. I'm an Azure Solutions Specialist at Phoenix Software. And part of my job is to help you as a customer figure out if Azure is a good fit. Uh, and if it is, explain to you how Phoenix can help you transition to Azure. Part of what we're going to do today is, is a bit of an introduction to Azure, um, uh, some of the pros and cons of Azure, uh, as well as go through um, uh, really how Phoenix can, can help you get um, and transition or, or start you on your public cloud journey. So we'll start with um, a, a few of the pitfalls of public cloud and, and, and I'm, I'm going to start really um, a bit pessimistically and say that public cloud isn't for everybody. Um, and I talk about that as a general, not just uh, Azure, uh, AWS, Google Cloud. Um, a lot of it is being driven by um, uh, strategies at senior level, at board level, to say that customers need to have a, a cloud first strategy or a, 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 a SaaS first strategy. The best one recently I had was a, a cloud considered strategy, um, uh, which I think is probably the most appropriate. So the first problem we have with public cloud is that customers really don't know how to price it. it it's, it's quite a scary prospect that if you do this wrong, it's gonna cost you a lot of money, um, especially if you're putting it on a credit card or an agreement where you can rack up overages without really knowing. So um, that, that's the scariest thing for customers is, and, and the real big challenge is, is there's, there's this whole wide world of services out there that, that people are wanting to really take uh, control of and are really wanting to help their uh, springboard their organization onto this, this massively transformational journey, especially when we start looking at uh, bots and AI uh, and, and data analytics, there's some really good services out there. But getting onto that first run of the ladder, that, that, that IaaS platform is, is often the most um, uh, difficult to, to do. But once you do that, is 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 much easier. So if we take one example, if we just look at the um, Azure pricing calculator, so this is the Azure pricing calculator, um, and, and this sort of kind of highlights some of the difficulties that some of our customers have um, when uh, when looking at Azure, and specifically um, pricing uh, Azure up, for example. So the first one is it's in dollars, um, so that can be easily changed. This isn't a, a sort of a walkthrough on the pricing calculator, it's really just here to show you some, some of the challenges. So if we change that over to uh, to pounds, um, and we just look at some of the options that we have re here really for, for a VM. So we've got region, which is, is relatively straightforward. I'm not gonna go through all the options. Um, operating system, which is which is relatively straightforward. Tier um, there, um, what does this mean? How do, how, do we, how do we know which tier our VMs need to be in? Possibly the, the one that's the most complicated is, which one do we need? What's an A series? What's a B series? What's a D series? How on earth do I know how many cores I'm gonna need? But basic principles of virtualization will apply, um, so that makes it a bit more easier. It's it's not totally dissimilar, but um, what's the difference between an F series and, and, and whatnot? So once I've then selected that, we have options around pay as you go and reserved instances. These these um, prices massively differ here, as you can see. Um, then how many hours do I need it on for? What what does this mean? Um, we then start looking at hybrid use benefits. Again, if you're completely new to the public cloud and Azure, this this can be difficult as well. Um, uh, and then obviously that's the compute and the, uh, the, 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 the compute and the RAM sorted, but then we still have to attach disks. Um, storage is a big, big um, complicate, not complication, but there's a bigger misunderstanding around storage and access of storage in public cloud. Um, and then finally there's, there's support. So how does all this work? How, how can I make benefits of the public cloud? As we can see there, it's, it, it's, it's, it's not, hugely straightforward trying to get an accurate price. Um, if we then start looking at, at, at storage, um, again, we have uh, the, the regions here. So if we just stick to, to what we know, which is uh, which is the UK South, um, which is Slough, by the way, uh, what's block blob, file storage is relatively straightforward, what are unmanaged disks, um, what tiers do we need to be looking at? Um, capacity is straightforward, you'll typically know how much you need, but um, Part of part of uh, public cloud is, uh, and one of the benefits of public cloud is actually right sizing that, not just buying a terabyte for terabyte's sake. How much are you actually using? Um, and then we've got all these read and write operations. Um, uh, another uh, question we get asked as well is: is people wanting to access the native underlying um, blob storage or the, the scale out object store that, that every public cloud sits on? Um, so um, in this instance, this would be um, this would be just block blob storage. Um, 
and how do I access hot cool and archive but again lots of confusing things here so so how do we how do we uh, get through that so what I'm not going to do now is sort of run through a hundred page slide deck on, on on Azure what I'm going to do now is sort of go through um, how Phoenix can help demystify this for you and and really help you um, transform your organization by adopting um, Azure and the public cloud